I'm hoping that YouTube is not going <laughs> to close out or anything. No, well, it should be good. It says that we're going live. Yep. Hey, where it's on. <laughs> hey, everyone. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Sorry about that. For some reason, YouTube was not working for me. I had to um, restart my computer and we had issues with the link, but we are live now. So thank you for hanging tight. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I see a lot of people really, really liked it or gave it three stars and everything like that. Very nice. Welcome, Chase, to your very first cozy. Hello, oh. Lady Gizmo. I was like, we're converting people to cozy mysteries. I like it. Yeah. Hey, Lisa. How you doing? I know. You guys are so, so <laughs> you guys are adorable. Yeah, so I'm seeing the three stars. So did everyone like the book? Did you have thoughts about this book? I asked over on Twitter. Um, a lot of people mentioned they liked um, our heroine with being bookish. So... There's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the things that I um, that I quoted on chapter 11. It says, instead of finding a boyfriend like Esther had instructed, I decided I would hit up the next best thing, the bookstore. And then she said, there was nothing like the feeling of holding a book in your hand and traveling to another place, another time, another life. I was called a nerd, but a lot because of it. But I didn't care. I wear that hat with pride. And so like... I was highlighting it while I was on the plane back home. Oh yeah, I printed those quotes out and I posted those over on the Twitter account earlier. I love those lines. I just, I also am gonna apologize in advance. My vocal cords are mad at me for using them so frequently during our debate. I apologize that I have this like deep voice on me, but I love those lines too. Those are like right at the top of my pile of favorite quotes from the book. Yeah, no, they were really, really good. I, I liked that. Um, I see three stars. Um, yes, I loved her roommate. Her roommate was my favorite character. Um, I loved her a lot. I actually really wish that I could have a cozy whose um, main protagonist was a bartender. I feel like she would have a lot of stories and there could be a lot of potential murders happening within that setting. I thought that that would be really cool. I mean, my favorite part with their dialogue was when she's going, of course I'm going to help you. I'll be the Laverne to your Shirley. Mm -hmm. It was so cute. I mean, she's willing to go help her, be the sleuth. I just love that. Yeah, no. I I really liked her her roommate. It was, it was great. I also like that she told her and kept her in the loop. Mm -hmm. I really liked this book. I gave it, I mean, I gave this book five stars. I really enjoyed this book. So, I mean, again, with the sleuth who Again, you need agency, and she had the agency, but she also didn't act independently to the point where she was being, you know, that whole too stupid to live thing where you're going, oh, you're putting yourself in a situation. She kept her in the loop, and the friend went with her when she was sleuthing. Yeah. And I like how they used the the internet to to figure out, you know, the backgrounds. She's like, yeah, I checked their LinkedIn page and their Facebook page and different things like that. I really, really liked that. I think that it was a good, solid first book in a series. Um, there were some parts that annoyed me. I felt like the, that Lana was kind of immature and I got kind of over her whole entire, uh, relationship thing. Like, I'm like, okay, yes, I see what he did. Yes, that was horrible, but you need to get over it. You need to stop using it as a crutch. And I think even her family and friends were annoyed with it too. <laughs> so that, cause they were telling her to get over it. Um, that I mean, me. I feel like if you've ever had, if you've ever been cheated on, it's really hard though. So I think the way it played out, I give her, I didn't, I didn't mind that at all. Yeah, it I, bothered me because like, I'm just like, okay, you know, it doesn't need to be all about that. You, you, you can still go out and have friends and not let something like that get you down for over a year. No, I, I disagree. I think if you've been in a relationship, you think you have the one and then they, they turn it around on you. I'm like, I'm if it was only a year, I still give her credit. I'm in the total opposite camp than you. Because, I mean, when you get your heart broken like that, it's hard. Oh, no, I know. It's just it, I was more looking into the into the mystery than that. I did like um, 
I like the officer more than the rich, uh, the rich guy. I forgot his name. Oh, Ian. Oh, yeah. absolutely. He was a little creepy when he, he was super creepy. And I'm like, dude, she's obviously not into you. Stop asking. The part that I think really threw me with him was that he gave her this business proposition and then he asked her out. I was mm -hmm. kind of going like, this is inappropriate. I mean, it's one thing if people meet in the office and a relationship grows from there, but it's another to just try and do both at the same time. That was a little iffy. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I like what Lisa said that she wished that there had been a stronger sense of town. I think that that's what they were doing with the whole Chinatown aspect was that was the town inside of a bigger city. Um, and I got the feel of that. I wish that I would have felt a little bit closer to more of the shops around it. And I think that that would have given a little bit bigger of a, um, a cozy town feeling, but I think that that's what she'll, um, that's what she'll get to later in the series is having the Chinatown grow and sort of become, um, a more enclosed kind of family, especially now that uh, the man who owned it was killed. Um, they're sort of going to come together a little bit more, hopefully. I mean, I thought I, the sense of community was there because he was the person who helped form the community. Our victim was the one who helped create this plaza and he was the one people were paying their rents to. I mean, the community gathered at his it wasn't a funeral morning situation. They threw a party for him. So, I mean, people would get together. And so I also, in, in one way, I'm kind of glad she didn't go into all the other shops because there's already a lot of characters for her first book. So I didn't mind the fact that we only saw kind of a sliver of everything to offer. Um, I actually thought that was really well done writing wise because we would see the characters pop in and out, but there, you don't want to have too many of them. <laughs> so I didn't really hold that against her. There is a bar owner mystery series, Max Bar Mystery Series. All right. I will be I will be looking that up soon. I think that that'll be cool. Max Bar Mystery. I mean, did everyone know who the killer was? I'm just curious. I did know who the killer was because she just kept pointing out about how much he was staring at her that I was just like, yeah, he has to be the killer out of all of it. I did like the fact that she had to dig into the history of like her parents and like the beginning of Chinatown being created to figure out how he connected to everyone. I liked that, but I knew he was the killer. I mean, I think I appreciated the fact there was a lot of backstory to dig through it wasn't just oh we have the current murder there's more to it than just what's going on in the moment i thought it was really interesting how they mm -hmm. how that she kind of interweaved the past with the current i think i liked that i mean again spoiler alert we're talking spoilers tonight um with peter the way um i i, li I liked the details with it because he found out yeah. that the victim was the dad and he didn't want to deliver the food because he didn't want to go see his dad. So the things kind of came around nicely with how she did the backstories that occurred, you know, off the page beforehand and then also happened 20 years beforehand. So I just liked the way it developed naturally. Yeah, no, I liked that as well. Um, I liked the, the way that she was able to throw sort of Peter under the bus for so long before finally, uh, letting everybody realize that he had another reason to be a little bit salty. I mean, I, I think it was interesting though because the details were held back and just enough. I mean, <laughs> the one thing I think is funny though, he's like, I went to a strip club because nobody would look for me there. I was going, okay, well that's, sure. Well, we'll, we'll pretend that's the reason you're at a strip mm -hmm. club. We'll yeah. pretend because you're talking to a female protagonist. Naturally, that's why you're at the strip club. But I mean, I thought it was interesting how he didn't want to deliver food. And that was kind of nice that we figured out what the argument was, even though it, it, I just, I liked the way she did that with him. The only thing that kind of frustrated me is the fact that like, yes, that's a big, huge secret, but why didn't he just tell the cops that? Like, like that's just, I mean, that's one thing that you should be able to be like, you know, yeah, I had an argument with him because I found out that he was my father. I mean, it would have been something that would have um, made the cops not look at him as hard instead of being all cagey and stuff that, 
that, that I was like, come on, dude, you, you could have just said that. I mean, I think this is the whole amateur sleuth versus detective. I mean, I don't know if we don't actually, I don't know if he actually ever said he never told anybody. And even if he did tell the cops, they might have zoned in on him harder. Because, I mean, maybe they, he thought he would inherit or something. I mean, I honestly didn't hold that against him either. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I thought, I, I honestly. Yeah, what's nice about Cozy's is, or any book in general is that everybody reads something differently and takes what the characters say in a different way and everything like that. I I mean, I just saw Lisa's comment. I love the father when he calls her Goober. Yeah. I thought that was adorable. That was one of my favorite things in the book. And I printed that out. And I also like when the detectives like, did your father just call you Goober? Mm -hmm. So I, I liked that. I just wanted to point that out when I saw Lisa's comment. <laughs> yeah, no, I love the father was one of my favorite characters. I felt like he was really realistic and just like that silly, like good natured kind of dad. I really, really liked that. CR, looking at the ratings on Goodreads, it's interesting. People either loved it or found it mediocre. <laughs> but that's with most books. Most books, you either love it or you, or you, 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 you kind of just, it's all right. I would say that I would read the next one in the series because I feel like um, the characters can be built upon and, and everything like that. I mean, I think I really liked it because I thought it was well written. And I also thought she had a lot of details for the mystery. I mean, even having um, Mr. Fang's wife have the two birth certificates, I thought there was a lot of different details going to different characters. And I mean, in my head, that's not mediocre writing. That's just not. Yeah. Because there was too many details. There's too much backstory. I mean, I think she's a good writer. Uh, again, five stars for me. But I mean, oh, again, I everyone's a bad, bad writer. I said that I enjoyed it. Um, no, I, was I, saying the mediocre, I was saying the mediocre comments, like, I think she's a good writer. Yeah, no, the, the writing was very well done. Um, I, I agree with Natalie. I want to know more about the ancient guy with the oil and herbal shop. Yeah, he seemed really, really cool. And the fact that, like, no one in the town knows how old he is. Like, everybody's like, yeah, he has to be over 100. Like... I, I feel like he's got he's got a lot of stories to tell and he sees everything. I mean, I also kind of love the fact that he was the one prescribing the potentially po uh, poisonous flowers, but she was inoculated <laughs> because she'd been already giving them into her system. I just mm -hmm. didn't have so I kind of liked that he was included in different ways and he kind of gives you this like he's like the town elder. Goes to him for all of the things. <laughs> yeah. You think you think that will happen in the series that he gets his own story? I hope that he does. I think that that would be really really cool. I mean, I think I, I was just reading Lisa's comment. I was talking again. I've I had the the distinct pleasure of meeting and chatting with Vivian, um, and she even said she's get she got comments of people saying. You know, you're push, you're pushing the cozy mystery lines, and yeah, she. I definitely think she plays with the genre standards a little bit. So you say you want a more cozy. I think that she definitely tried to do like a modern cozy. And if you're expecting kind of an older Agatha Christie esque or Aurora Tea Garden, mm -hmm. like it's just a different vibe. And so I think that's something that's interesting. Like she knows that, and so it's one of those. I think that's kind of consistent throughout that she keeps this sign like this same kind of modern, oh, we're gonna check the LinkedIn. So it's definitely a different type of cozy. Yeah, I do like the modern kind of sleuthing a little bit more. Um, I really liked that. I do like the fact that, sh that she did have a good uh, sense of humor about, or like a good sense about her about her heritage. I did, um, I did highlight this and, cause I, I got annoyed for Lana like I got annoyed for the character when the little old lady was like, I do love these little things. You Orientals have the cutest traditions. And she talked about how she groaned inwardly. The term, that term is totally outdated, except when it's used to describe a vase or a rug of which I am neither. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm far from politically correct, but everyone has their pressure points. I love that she was able to point that out um, as a, character who is a diverse character compared to what other cozy mystery um, protagonists are and what other cozy mystery authors are. Um, if you look at the diversity within that this genre, um, they're predominantly white female. And so I loved the fact that she um, 
talked about her her history and her culture and everything like that. And I love that. I hope that um, throughout the series that becomes more prevalent and um, and talked about to sort of uh, you know get away from those assumptions about certain races or cultures or sex and things like that. I mean, I like that she was able to draw attention to things in a nice, humorous, subtle way where she was taking a stance, but it wasn't outright. I mean, she was saying, no, I don't know math. <laughs> no, I don't know karate. So she was drawing attention to things in a kind of subtler way, which I think was kind of nice. She was kind of poking fun, but in a really nice way. I mean, she was, I, I really liked her writing again. <laughs> yeah. I just appreciate that. And the Mandarin hugs. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, exactly. I don't know math. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that her roommate got her a book about sleuthing, too. Like, you know, why not go and get a book? That was great. I liked that. Again, I really, really liked the bluntness of her best friend. I mean, I also, uh, again, she would just kind of call her on her stuff. Mm -hmm. I liked it when she said, I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but she's talking about the detective and she goes, oh, he has nice eyes. She's going, he has nice eyes. Do you want to elaborate? Mm -hmm. She's kind of doing that wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Like she's reading between the lines. And so I kind of like that. The yeah. Humor there. Yeah. And I like that she was just like, she was offended whenever Lana tried to like keep her out of part of the investigation She's like, um, no, excuse me. So we're going out tonight and we're going to break into the office. Like it's a we thing. It's not just a you thing. I, I liked that. That was really, really good. Yeah. I'm like, yes, everyone needs to agree. I'm like, yes, agree and support Courtney's. That was because that was a very great answer. Yeah. I mean, I also think. Again, this is what I really love this. I, I loved this book. To me, this played out like a Hallmark movie in my head when I was reading it. So I think this would be a great adaptation to add to Hallmark and their. Uh, I can see that. I can see that being really good. And I think that it would play better out on screen too, because you can really see the um, the Chinese restaurant. Like you can see all of those things. Like I can see them doing being really well with like the the, the play sets and everything. Well, the, yeah, the reason I mention it is because I know they're trying to do more diversity, and I love uh, the Morning Show Mystery series uh, with Holly Robinson. Pete, I'm like, yes, please add this one in there too. Like, please expand yeah. on representations. So I think you know, Mark should read this book and look into getting the option rights for that. Uh, okay, I wanted to join them in their break in, and you know, I'm not the biggest rule breaker. Yeah, I know that, they, but it would totally have been awesome to like be there with their break in and like to find the false bottom of the drawer and stuff like that. That was cool. I mean, I also, I, I'm trying to remember if this was the exact scene, but there, <laughs> but there were security cameras when she's trying to talk her way out of it. And she's going, I thought at first you're just interested in seeing what I had in the house being, you know, just being nosy. And then she goes, no, then I realized you're taking too long. And she goes, I was using the bathroom. I had an upset stomach. Like, no, no, no. I was in the office looking for things. So I kind of yeah. liked the way they were <laughs> things. Yeah, that she was caught in her snooping. Yes, Hallmark does make cozy mystery movies. Yeah, they yeah. do. Um, movies and Mysteries, Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. Um, they have two different channels. Well, actually, there's three, because there's Hallmark Drama for the classics, then there's mm -hmm. the rom-coms, and then there's Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. And that is where I spend a lot of my time. <laughs> I was gonna say, if you like Aurora Tea Garden, Hannah Swenson, um, Mystery Woman, they have a lot of they have a lot of really good series. Um, yeah. Then they have a few new ones like Darrow and Darrow, uh, the Wedding Planner um, <laughs> Mystery Series. Um, they just stopped Garage Sale because of Lori Laughlin, so we're not gonna talk yeah. about that. But there's a lot of ones there if you like mysteries. Yeah, no, you should totally look into it, Jaden. I think that you would like it. And then Acorn TV, they also have a lot of really good ones. That's another one to look into. Uh, you can add that onto your Amazon streaming service for I think four ninety nine a month. So it's worth looking into if you like those types of things. I just rewatched all of Mrs. Fernie Fisher's murder mystery series for like the fourth time um, while I was in Japan. So it was great. You should check. You while you were in Japan, shouldn't you have been out exploring? Well, yeah, but like the plane ride to there was oh. 11 hours and then like we took plane rides from different okay. cities so like 
there's not much you can do during that time. Okay, for a second you said while well, I was in Japan, I was like, what do you mean? I was like, I pictured you in your hotel room watching that for a second. Wait, what? No, while we were in our hotel room, like at night, we watched um, Garage Wars because we wanted to watch Trash TV. <laughs> so you see, I mean, at least you got some of those mystery watching in. Mm hmm. I did. See, I would too. We need to start a petition to get these books on Hallmark or send or do one of those um, at them messages out there. Because they have their um, Twitter account, which has predominantly mysteries, so we gotta tweet at them, tell them to adapt this book. But I mean, I also kind of liked um, <laughs> just looking down at my notes. The death. I mean, so Mr. Fang just going back around. He was poisoned. He has a well. He wasn't poisoned, but he has a, he has a shellfish allergy. So I kind of liked the way it was handled with the how he passed away. So mm -hmm. um, I know mentioned they didn't read the book. Um, so he's allergic. Uh, and so instead of getting the chicken dumplings, he was delivered the shrimp dumplings. And so I liked the way that Lana got invested into the sleuthing. Mm -hmm. and so she delivered it. She thought she was the last person to see him alive. She thought one of her um, coworkers whom she's known since he was 18 and now he's 30, like she thought he was going to be um, implicated. So just going back around, I just liked how this was handled in regards to how she got involved because we've talked about this before where they're kind of like looking over the fence being mm -hmm. no, no reason or they're not sleuthing properly so i just want to give the sleuthing props there <laughs> yeah no and i like that first she was trying to clear her name and then when she realized that she was no longer a suspect she was like no now i need to clear peter's name yeah i just wanted to mention that because that was something i think we've talked about in the past mm -hmm. and I know, I know uh, during one of my cozy mystery like book haul videos, I was talking about how there's never any dogs and cozies and we finally got a cozy dog. We got Coco, yes. Koki, or Kiko man. <laughs> no, he sounded adorable. I was like the little black pug who put the little paws and she woke up looking at him. So I just kind of appreciated that there was a dog in a cozy mystery instead of just cats all the time. I mean, I love cats. I'm allergic to cats. So the only way I get to appreciate them is through cozies. But I like that we had a cozy dog for a change. Just want to throw that. It was very nice having the the cozy puppy. Not me. No, that's you. <laughs> I can't mute my messages and then not mute everything else. For some oh no, no! I was just I was looking up. Like, did I get a no? I was just looking up because oh, I was. Yeah, no. I was confused. <laughs> um. Yeah. I just because even then, looking back, going back, she. People thought she was in on it. So I kind of liked the whole how she got into the sleuth thing. And her dog, I kind of wish the dog was helping her sleuth in a way. Like they were out on a walk and something happened. So I need to go read the rest of the books in the series and be like, yes, yeah, now the dog is in this one. <laughs> the murder comes more close to home in the next ones. See, thank you. Yes. We need to have books with dogs and cats in them. We need to start throwing in some more. <laughs> All some more cozy animals. companions. Yes, yeah, that would be. Yeah, they look so cute on the covers. I don't think, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say we only had the this, but I think he would be a really cute little pug on the cover. Mm -hmm. I don't think he has any dogs on the covers yet, but you never know. I'm pretty sure there are four, and there's a fifth one coming out, mm -hmm. Rebecca. I was gonna say, I'm just looking down at the little notes. Oh, there are four. Yeah, because I know she has that wanton something one. Wanton murder, I think. I think she just did some ARC giveaways. So I'm pretty sure that's coming up. I think mm -hmm. I might have an ARC somewhere. Haven't read it yet. <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> Let me see. I'm going to put in on my phone. Yeah, there's, yeah, uh, the fourth one was Wonton Terror, and then the fifth one's called Egg Drop Dead. So it goes Death by Dumpling, Dim Sum, Fears, or, or Of All Fears, Murder Low Main, Wonton Terror, and then Egg Drop Dead. All variations of amazing Chinese food. <laughs> I, I mean, I saw someone above mention the recipes. I don't mean I don't I don't know how to cook Chinese food. That would be a very interesting recipe book if she if they put that in the back. Yeah, um, like a couple like if they could do like a wonton soup, that'd be great. Um, but her her covers are absolutely stunning. 
they have, she has beautiful covers. Like they're just so vibrant and um, they're very, very uh, colorful, but like sort of like the rich, like ruby stone kind of colorfuls. Yeah. It's fun when you edit the pictures and the colors really pop. Because I, I did one picture for Instagram and all of a sudden I know I was noticing like different things pop up. I mean, even just having like the different uh, ingredients in here, because they kind of blend in the cover the way they're printed. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you go to like add shadowing or contrast, they really do just come alive. So I definitely think when you look at the ebook version, you might actually get a little bit more than the paper copy, which sounds terrible. Because when it's printed, it doesn't have the same vibrancy. It doesn't so have as, as much uh, like HD quality. Yeah, I mean, maybe if there was like a gloss over them, but it's definitely a beautiful cover. I really like the book covers that she has. Yeah, no, they're awesome. Of course, now I really want to like order Chinese food. Um, I was like, and I'm not, I mm -hmm. didn't know thing. we should have been doing that. We should have been eating our Chinese food talking about this book. That would totally have been a great thing. I had a lot of rice over the past two weeks though, so I probably should stay away for a little while. True. <laughs> I mean, so we've we're definitely bouncing around. I'm looking down at my notes. I'm like, which way did we already talk? Um, as I have my like hot water and lemon, because again, I apologize, my voice is hoarse. Um, yeah, I just I liked all the details. I'm just, I know I said that before, but even mentioning the different takeout. Um, I thought this was an interesting element with the mystery. Again, I'm very detail oriented. I liked how. <laughs> I think how to explain this. So I liked how we had our detective who went through all the takeout receipts, mm -hmm. the receipt from the inside the restaurant because he ordered in, he got the shrimp dumplings and he got it in the restaurant, but they didn't think to check the receipts from in the restaurant that day. So I kind of liked how everything kind of came back around and the restaurant was such an important element to the mystery itself. Because sometimes, I mean, because I've never had a nice sense of place where it was kind of grounded in, okay, we like the, we have our chef who's the suspect. We have Lana who's the waitress also sleuthing. And you have um, like the, the restaurant itself provided the, the issue that, you know, the shellfish that poisoned him. So I kind of liked that we always kept coming back around to the restaurant. So I kind of liked the home base element of it. Um, <laughs> and then I liked how the detective eventually kind of warmed up to her. I want more of his backstory and why he was so closed off. Mm -hmm. But I went visited the restaurant and the mother was so cute when he visited. She's like, we'll give you our best table. So I just love the restaurant feel of it all. <laughs> yeah, no, I really liked it. And it did feel like a, um, a family uh, run business. I, I mean, cause I helped my, my family run their business for like 10 years. And so it really did feel like a family run business. Like my nanny would come in whenever she wanted to come in because she was the owner and I would be the one running it throughout the day and everything like that. And so the mom reminded me of my nanny a little bit and it, I liked that. If people like, there's a Mexican themed restaurant. Okay. Now you gotta, I want the, I want the, I want the title. I want to go ask my Goodreads to be read. I'm intrigued. I mean, I also, again, I love the cooking cozies. I love the baking. I love the cooking. And so I liked that this was a different one. Like, I mean, I don't think I've ever read one in a Chinese restaurant before. And so it was kind of nice to read about, okay, we have dumplings, we have different things. Because again, every time I pick up Murder, She Baked, I just want a chocolate cake or a cupcake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I am definitely influenced by the books and what I want to eat based on what I'm reading. Oh, 100%. Uh, <laughs> Every time there's a coffee one, you want to go have coffee. Mm -hmm. We've established, um, I'm pretty sure Live and Let Shy is going to be our next book. Yeah, um, I mean, that one's going by like bounds. Um, but I was just going to say, if there's chai, I want to be drinking chai when I'm drinking this book. So that's mm -hmm. happening. That's why you say Mexican themed restaurant. I'm going, okay, now I want to go, or if I read that, I'm be ordering Mexican food. But I just loved how the restaurant was kind of where it all came back to. I mean, and again, I liked that it was they were invested because we cared about the location of it. We cared about the restaurant itself. We cared about the workers. So I liked that it wasn't just a restaurant. There was a lot more to it than saying, oh, I work at a restaurant. It's, I work with my family, I'm friends with the cook. And I also thought it was really funny that she drew attention to the fact he was a skinny chef. I don't know why, I thought that was funny. Uh, it was like, you don't trust a skinny chef. Like I could kind of tell where she was going with that, but I just thought it was funny. So. <laughs> 
throwing that in there tangent moment. But I just liked the sense of it all. So now I'm curious if the Mexican theme restaurant has a similar thing or not. So you got to tell me more about this. And then random note, <laughs> I loved this. I love that we had a heroine who talked about her makeup and her hair. Mm -hmm. I thought it was hysterical and how she's like, if you ever see me go out without any makeup on, please be aware something terrible has happened. And then she dressed up because she knew she was gonna be seeing her detective who she mm -hmm. really liked. So I thought it was very relatable in that sense. So I thought it was really yeah. cute that they drew attention and made her real in that way. I was just looking down because it was just so cute when she's going, okay, I didn't throw my hair in a ponytail today. I just liked the little throwaway tossaway lines. Um, yeah, she said how she spent extra time and pinned her hair up with like the jade combs and she put on extra make <laughs> and some extra makeup might have accidentally gotten applied. Accident. And couldn't a girl get a little dolled up for work now and then? So I just liked the throat, like the humor of it all. Mm -hmm. I mean, you knew what she was doing and you also understand if you see the guy you like, you're like, yes, I'm gonna do my hair extra nice that day. So I like the details of it. Yeah, no, that was, I, I like that. She she was a, a quirky character. I mean, but again, she's wearing makeup, she's reading books. Mm -hmm. she, she has this great, ba I mean, she has an interesting backstory. She has nice friends. Again, I just thought it was really well developed in that way. Thank you, yes, high five. I love the writing style. <laughs> I mean, did anyone have any favorite scenes or characters? I mean, what jumped out to you about this book? I'm just curious, because I know I've been talking about how much I love it. <laughs> so I'm just curious what you guys enjoyed. Yeah, because I mean, I really did. Um, I think that it's it's a good solid first book in a series and that it'll only get better as it goes on. Um, I really liked Megan. There was another quote, I don't know where it is about, she was talking about like, seizing the moment and not letting it be a bad day. And I really liked that uh, life is short. We hear it all the time. So instead of moping around, let's both take life by the proverbial horns. Let's live and appreciate re each other and what we have in our lives. Um, and I liked that. She says, I knew she was right, but I didn't have it in me to at the moment to take on such a positive thought. <laughs> and she was like, maybe we can start tomorrow. And so I liked the fact that she she was real and she was like, yeah, I mean, M Mr. Fang just died, but yeah, I'll, I'll be more happy tomorrow, maybe? I liked that. I thought it was kind of, I think they followed that up with talking about watching scary movies and like taking mm -hmm. the day off from work the next day. So I kind of liked that she wasn't, oh, I'm gonna try and work through this because I'm so perfect and I can obviously act as if nothing wrong has occurred. I liked that they acknowledged the emotional impact of that. Um, when I was at uh, Malice, I talked to Leslie Butowitz and she was talking about the sense of community and how people and how they react to the death and how important that is in a cozy mystery. And so that writing advice was ringing in my head when I read that scene and going, okay, like, yes, they're doing exactly what Leslie's telling people to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I like I liked that. It was, it, it, that was very good. I liked that she was like, scary movies? And she's like, yep, I'll get the ice cream. I also liked the friend, how she was trying to get her to go exercise. And everyone's like, Lana, exercise? No, that's not happening. Yeah, that's not happening. And she wanted her donut, which is also relatable. She wasn't just eating healthy food all the time. Or, I mean, we had donuts in there. That would be a nice recipe. Throwing that in there as well, because she liked her donuts. If they want to throw a classic recipe in the mix. Yeah, she was real. I, I think that's why I appreciated her as a character, because... Every so often you'll get the stereotypical of, oh, I wear makeup and I'm like this, or, oh, I'm bookish and I'm like this. So I like that they, that uh, Vivian Chan combined all those elements into one character. She was this multi-dimensional person to me. As I'm looking down at my notes. And and I like the way she described her crush. She has nice eyes, also relatable when you don't admit you like someone. <laughs> Aw, see, everyone needs a friend to know when to push and when to not. And also, you also need a, the mother also reminded me of Mrs. Bennett. So the Jane, like, I mean, you guys know me, you know, I love Pride and Prejudice. The mother always wanting to marry the daughters off. Mm -hmm. I thought it was funny the way the mother was like, and have you gotten your boyfriend yet? So I just kind of thought that was funny. <laughs> 
as I'm just looking down at my notes. Uh, so I thought it was cute the way the mother was like, oh, and have you talked to this guy and maybe you should do this. So she gave me Mrs. Bennett vibes. I just, yeah. I loved it. Love it. it. That Lana still pushed at it though and was like, you know, I don't need a guy to make me happy. It's okay if I don't have a guy to make me happy. I can be happy on my own. Cause yeah, I liked, I liked the fact that Lana was like, yeah, it's okay that I don't have a boyfriend. <laughs> I liked that. Her, uh, Lana and her sister's relationship was interesting. I thought it was funny how the mother was treating them so differently because the other one was in school as a lawyer, but yet she's pushing the younger sister, Lana, to go get married. She's like, yeah, but the other one's in school. She's too busy. She doesn't have time for man. You, however, have plenty of time for man. It was so Mrs. Bennett to me of like, yes, you need to go find your husband. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. And now I need to go read the rest of the books because if they're opening a donut shop, now you're combining the Chinese food and donuts. This is going to be a very interesting read. I am there for it. All about the donuts. Because I have the rest of the books that have been published. Um, I have, I, ha I bought them before I went to Malice so she could sign them. Because um, I, I had the ebooks and I have the physical copies. Um, but I don't have the one that's, I think I have the art somewhere for the next one. Or maybe it's an ebook. But now I need to go figure out the donut shop because now I'm intrigued. I mean, there's never anything wrong with donuts. Again, I told you guys, I love Hannah Swenson and Murder, She Baked. So if you're going to throw in, I, I love baking because I don't bake myself. I watch the Great British Baking Show like it's my job. But I um, oh, yeah. I don't That's the it's the best. It's one of the best shows in the world. CR just checked the Mexican restaurant series. It's called A Taste of Texas Mystery by Rebecca Adler. First one is Here Today, Gone Tamale. <laughs> that is a fantastic title. I'm trying to remember. Oh, so um, Ginger Bolton. Have you guys read her? She writes about donuts too, <laughs> which is such a weird thing to say. She writes about donuts. But Ginger Bolton, I think it's called like Jealousy Filled Donuts is the one that's coming out. Um, and all of her books have like, it, 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 she, I have the other ones over there somewhere, but she plays with donuts too. So <laughs> this is a very weird conversation topic. She plays with donuts. Um, donuts. <laughs> but yeah, no, now we got to figure out the donut ones. So I gotta go. We're gonna have to read the rest of these Vivian Chan books. So I am intrigued now. I am. I mean, I was already intrigued before. Five stars. Um, I had only read the first book in the series a while ago. I think this was before I went to Malice because I wanted to read her books. Um, but yeah, no. So now I gotta go read the next ones in the series. <laughs> okay. Yes. Go read Ginger Bolton. She's awesome and she is absolutely adorable. I mean, it, her writing is it's so much fun. It has like Hannah Swenson vibes. Um, she's another Kensington author, so you know they're Joanna Fluke. They're all, they're all, they're all Kensington authors. Kensington. Yep. Kensington is pretty awesome. They, they they pick some really good authors. Is the Deputy Donut Mystery Series? I had that on my list of something. I just remember the Deputy Donut. I know. Now you got me looking. I'm like, what's coming out? Because yeah. I know. Because there are more coming out. I got the the advanced reader copies for some of them. Um, I know, I'm just looking down. So there's Christmas Cocoa Murder. We have, um, I'm trying to figure out like all the foodie ones coming out as I'm looking at the list. I have this like uh, Death by Cafe Mocha. This is coming in uh, September. So there are, mo there are more food mysteries being published very soon. So <laughs> <laughs> plenty of things to keep us busy with our TBRs. I know. See now. See now. I'm, you're making me hungry. <laughs> right. I haven't even had dinner yet. I know Starbucks got their pumpkin bread back, so I've been having fun with that the last couple of days. Heck yeah! I'm all about summer being gone and fall and winter happening. Yeah, I know. Now we got to go figure out the donut cozy mystery series. <laughs> and I also love that there's a donut emoji. I didn't know that. I'm not surprised, but I didn't know that. All the donut emojis. Um, does anybody have anything else that they'd like to talk about or to add? I mean, I, I just want to throw in as people might type. Um, I like the secondary characters that they were really well developed. That it was really interesting with uh, Kimmy Tan and how she was mad at her and you didn't know what was going mm -hmm. on. 
I just thought it was really well developed with the secondary characters too. So just that overall, it was just a really well done book in that regard. Cause I didn't know what Kimmy's secret was. I did not see that one coming again. Why I think they're pushing the Coast mystery uh, genre boundaries in a way. Yeah. Yeah, much I didn't see that. No, I didn't see that coming. I, I thought that maybe she might be like an escort or something, but um, I didn't, I didn't see stripper coming, but then it also made me want to know why she, they were having to work so hard if uh, Mr. Cheng was not actually going to raise their rent. So it made me, I was like, hmm. Yes, the next book that won is going to be the ch is, um, Chai. I think that was recommended by Anna. Chai or something. Live and Let Chai. That book was recommended by Anna. Um, I, I was so happy that people responded. Um, I was so happy that this poll was entirely made up by you guys, the people in the Coast Mystery Club. I put that out um, asking for people to tell me what was on their to be read list, books they were recommended. And so that was one of the books that came. Um, all, all of the books were recommended mm -hmm. by you all. And so that book seemed to really resonate with people. Everyone was so excited when that one, that one's winning by a landslide. So I'm pretty sure we can call that as our next book. Yeah, I would think so. I just want to make sure I give the proper shout out because I'm pretty sure it was Anna who recommended it. Um, yeah, everyone's talking about chai. I know, I love chai lattes. So th when we do this book, we're definitely gonna have to be re um, drinking chai teas all across the board. Yeah, it's winning by 53% or it's got 53% and then the other ones have like 16%. So pretty sure that that one's, it's called Live and Let Chai, which I um, totally bought as an as an ebook before the live stream because I assumed it was going to win and it looked good anyway. Yeah, it was recommended by Anna Ross. Um, she recommended a few, A Killer Plot, Live and Let Chai, An Appetite for Murder, and murders uh no you read you read this one recently and i actually have i think i got it before it's published uh murders no um vote of, yeah vote I was, of confidence. Mm -hmm. like uh, those vote of candles like those little ones that you can put in water that float yeah that one was cute i gave that one a three stars it was a good solid um first book in a series and so i do totally recommend that one it was good it, well she at the signing she had the little candles to give out i actually have a couple extra um, if that had won, I had some extra swag I would have sent y'all from that one. But yeah, people are really great responding with your um, recommendations. So it looks like Anna's book is the one that's going to be one. So special shout out to Anna Ross. Um, it's Anna Ross then with like the little underscore. So mm -hmm. we yeah. everyone can follow her now. <laughs> Sweet. I love her face. Oh, so you read it earlier this month. So yes, uh, you recommend it. You enjoyed it. Hope so. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I know it's a great title, and I mean, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a lot of books to grammable pictures with that. With mm -hmm. your book next to Chai, I mean, I can already see the pictures forming in my head. So I gotta go buy my physical copy and my ebook version. Um, I, pro I probably would have bought all the books anyway because they all sound really good. They do. The titles get me. So yeah, that book I think we can officially call that as next month's choice. Yep. So shout out to Anna, your book one. <laughs> Yay! I know. I really, I'm going to try and do this more often. I mean, I love having y'all participate. You know, I always ask you guys what you want to read um, for themes. I ask you guys all sorts of things. So it was really great having you guys all respond. It just it made my heart sing. I loved it. So we have a pretty good community here. I love their faces. See, now we're going to have to like, drink. Everyone needs to be drinking tea in the next live stream. We all should have ordered Chinese food and at like eight in, <laughs> eaten in. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have to do, we're going to have to be drinking our teas instead of me just with like my hot water and lemon. <laughs> I originally had green tea, but it wasn't helping. Yes, everyone needs to thank Anna. So thank you, Anna, for bringing this up. I'm so happy that you guys voted for it. Um, so yeah, so that's our book next month. And I'll definitely keep you guys posted with other stuff on the Twitter accounts until then. <laughs> Try and keep that active. Yeah. Well, I think that we've talked about the book and all of its upsides and all of that fun stuff, all the characters and everything. Is there anything else that anybody would like to, to talk about or anything like that? I think that I'm still recovering from jet lag and I feel like Angela's voice needs some rest too. <laughs> I was literally, yeah, RWA, I apologize. 
this is actually better. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't really know what that's saying. Um, yeah, RWA, I'm not used to talking that much. And so I was talking morning tonight. That <laughs> was what I was talking mm -hmm. the entire day. I was running like right. five hours of sleep. So um, the voice the voice is coming back, hopefully. I um, I definitely, I, I usually have a higher, more feminine voice instead of sounding like a James Earl Jones wannabe. So <laughs> I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sick. It's just the vocal chords. They're like, you're made an introvert for a reason. Stop using it. Um, it didn't help either that the signings were in smaller rooms and there were so many people and you had to like shout louder. It wasn't just you were talking a lot. You were shouting to be heard and have conversations. Like there was one author. She was so cute. She wanted to have a conversation and I literally could not hear a single word she said. Oh. I felt so badly. <laughs> I was just doing that nodding thing. Like, yeah. yeah. You're like, of course. Yeah. Totally under Yep. Mm -hmm. 100%. I know. Yes, I am tired, CR. I know. So, any about have any questions about next month's book or uh, any other thoughts about de death by dumpling? Any final things? Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. I know. I wanted to have my like little hot water and lemon. I was hoping that my voice wouldn't be as bad as it was tonight, but it's not that bad though. It's not too bad. <laughs> oh, thank you. I know. It's, I usually try and you know get much more dressed up and do the curly hair, the bun, or something. So. I, I'm just happy to be talking about this book because I enjoyed it. So I'm glad that other people. Aww. Hey, everybody, say hi. Say say thank you to Anna. Anna, if you look up, you'll get to see everybody saying thank you. Yes, yeah, so we were just talking about you because your book won. And so everyone needs to follow you on Twitter and Instagram. And you are amazing. And we love you. And we're so glad you're a part of this book club. So thank you for responding to my tweet, and I'm so glad that your choice won because it sounds awesome. I voted. For, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna tell everyone I voted for it. Oh no, I 100% voted for that one. Yeah. No. I was like, I'm like, being. I know. I don't know if we're supposed to be impartial or not, but I'm like, I voted. Oh for no, it. I'm not impartial. I always vote. <laughs> I mean, I, I do vote, but I mean, I wasn't sure if we we're allowed to tell people what we voted for. I was like, I voted for the live and let shy because I love chai lattes. That was my mm -hmm. thing. So, any other <laughs> any other final thoughts or comments? Well, or I, think that, I think that I'm I'm good. Next month we'll be on my channel, and so we'll be able to talk about live and let chai on my channel next month. Yeah, I mean, everyone <laughs> enjoy all the coziness. I might try and organize a buddy read for the rest of the books in the series if you guys are interested. And we will be talking about live and let chai next month. So I'm yeah. excited. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Love you guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. Have a nice one. Bye.